So let's start. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Edward Lucena. I'm, I'm going to talk about the marketing t execution team plan uh, for the next six months to one year or so. Let's see how can we do. So in the agenda, we have just a quick introduction. I'm going to talk about what the marketing team is doing. And the other three points today is how we can work in making a strategy plan to work in marketing. So our first point is identify our audiences. So the next part is make strategies, plans, or tasks to attack those uh, targets we are targeting. And then what content we are going to do to reach that, that, those audiences. So me. So I'm Eduardo Lucena, I'm from Venezuela, I live in Chile. I started working in in the Federal Project like three years ago. And for some weird reason, I still don't know how, I end up uh, being responsible for the marketing team. I start helping, uh, I start like an, uh, as an ambassador, as you can see, with my son, we, heard, we were uh, giving swag to the people in one event. And I started using uh, Fedora mostly because of the community. Most than the, any technical reason I could have to use it, I use it because the community is here is really strong, it's really friendly. You can get help uh, from anyone. And the key point for me was uh, to have things that I did that you can see reflected in other people, not necessarily in the, in the Fedora distribution, but, but in other people. So marketing, really? There is a marketing thing in Fedora? So yes, we are here. And the Fedora marketing team has an, an, a specific objective, that is to mm, develop and execute marketing strategy to promote the usage as support of the Fedora worldwide. What this means? This means that we need to find a way to, meet, to people to meet Fedora, not just because it's a Linux distribution, but specifically because what technologies we are shipping and explain how these technologies that we are shipping with Fedora are useful for its use case. So our current task is, I don't know, it's tax, not tax, sorry, <laughs> is the collecting the talking points. The talking points are supposed to be the list of, a list of key points that each release have that help ambassadors to talk to them in, in events, okay? So if um, there is a new genome version, we are shipping the new, um, uh, I don't know, the modularity version, we are shipping a new um, kernel, the lightest kernel, or we are switching from, I don't know, to from systemd to the next thing we are going to. So this is the talking points, and it looks trivial, but it's really hard to do, because not all the things are too responsive, and the other problem is that we try to have a talking points for all the editions and the spins. So uh, basically, the next, the last two releases have talking points because Alberto, that is from Mexico, and me, we were, um, we were uh, interrupting all the team's meetings. Say, hey, here. We need the talking points. What is new with you? Because we don't know what you're doing. You need to tell me what are you doing for me to de to list. And it was it, it starting to be a little hard, but we are completing the task uh, actually in a really good manner. The new release screenshots it was also being done by us, and we figured out that we are uh, repeating work with the screenshots. Because one thing that the website team required to each uh, spin seek and, and working group is to take to have high definition screenshots of their desktop. So uh, we need to figure out a new way to make this. The other thing I'm doing uh, is the Fedora podcast. The Fedora podcast is a little, it's sort of like a little experiment right now. It's a, a proper project of. Mm, reach that audience that use podcasts to get news. 
So the first uh, part of the Fedora podcast is some interviews with different team members of different teams and present what the team do, uh, how you can join to that team, how you can work with them, and explaining a little bit uh, uh, the new stuff in each team. The release announcement is a, a two-part uh, task. The first part is the beta announcement that is done by me. It's just a quick introduction of uh, what we ha are shipping in the next version. And the, re the, the GA release that is, is made by the Fedora project leader, right now is doing by Matthew. Uh, we try to, f to align this, the two announcements in the same way. And we are publishing it um, in the announcements list in, and in the Fedora magazine. And the other task we have now is that we have a social network team that is not part of marketing, but related with marketing. Um, and I think this is one of the great jobs they do. We are have a Google Plus channel. We have a Twitter Fedora uh, official account. We have a YouTube channel. We have a Instagram official account. So uh, the social network team is working right now in a different mailing list than the marketing team, but we try to be at least in communication of what the things are doing in each social network we have. So the next slide is we need to identify our audience. And to identify our the audience is not like we were talking before in with the council and with the manager committee that <coughs> we need to separate uh, every kind of audience if we are going to reach uh, developers or if we are reaching developers, maybe Python developers, Ruby developers, .NET developers. But most uh, in the marketing part, I'm trying to identify where people is looking for content and what type of content they are looking for. So it's not only about what they are doing, but how to reach that users. For example, the people in YouTube normally look for a screencast of doing things. Um, maybe some people uh, prefer to look for video tutorials. That is not the same thing. And maybe some people just prefer to look for a, a slideshow in a video. And it's not as the same thing, but it's the same channel. So we need to identify how to what is the people looking for in con in in terms of content and that's what i mean about audience not necessarily if there is a server people or technical people or developer or a student because that uh, differentiation is done or is supposed to be done by the manager committee plus council because we have a really, really long discussion before about if we want to reach like, like we normally call end users. And the big answer is no, we don't. But it was is that the list can be or too specific or not specific at all. And that's a problem that in mar the marketing thing we're not going to solve. In my case, uh, I say uh, audience in, the, in terms of what kind of content consumer we are looking for, OK? And and then we have uh, a podcast audience that is reaching 700 downloads uh, per week. That is pretty decent. Um, when I figured out about the, the Fedora podcast is that we ha have a lot of users that listen podcasts here in Germany. So I'm looking for the next interview to do it with a German guy. Is, 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 I don't know if you understand that makes sense a little bit, because it's li like to motivate people to listen. Okay, the other the the, the second big the second biggest audience, the first biggest audience is the U.S. So strategies, plans, or task. What does means? Uh, we live in a social media world right now in different paces, and we need to have different strategies for 
each audience. Okay, so it's not the same people that goes to f uh, to Facebook looking for uh, for content. It's not the same people that look in YouTube. It's not the same people that look in Flickr. So uh, every audience we can identify need a different strategy, and not, and sometimes it's not even a strategy. It's just a list of stuff you need to complete to reach that adult audience, and that's where I want to um, have a better connection with the social network team because they will be in charge of publishing the content. So there is a three part, uh, uh, three parties uh, work, people making content. We as marketing team look for where, where the consumer of this content are and the social uh, network, uh, the social network team, the social media teams to publish that content. So it's a three parties uh, job, but it should be that difficult if we can have the content. So the content. Like I was saying, we need to generate content for each kind of audience we are going to try to reach. And the problem is not only having content, but relating the content of the what we want to do in the project. If we have a, we are we already have a mission statement that is a kind of broad, but the other things that, has, that are, are happening that we need to address is what things are we want to publish that are ready to publish. Uh, we were talking in the Mindshare committee yesterday that we have um, three objectives, right? And, but not the three objectives are ready to publish content to the world. Because, for example, the Fedora IoT team is just forming now. So we need to connect the technical part and the council mission with the content we are going to generate to reach the people. And here is when this becomes real, because we have a workstation, we have a spin, we have some teams that want to be published because they want to reach more audience and we, they want to uh, make people understand that they are doing work for the project that is not necessarily technical related, but uh, they can hit the needs of the people. For the, the big example is the diversity team. They have, um, they are doing an amazing job, for example, with the Fedora Women Day. And the Fedora Women Day is uh, reaching audiences that normally we don't re we don't try to reach they find that place and they say oh this is here so we want to make content for that thing in that place and the fedora modularity objective that is uh, adam is here thank you for coming uh, they are doing a great job in the fedora modularity and we need to make content that two people know the fedora modularity we already have one video published and one more to come in the youtube channel for fedora modularity Yeah, and that's the kind of thing we need to do. We need to uh, to reach different audiences. Right now, uh, I think because I'm the only one working in in marketing. Uh, well, that's not true. Uh, we are only two guys working in marketing. Um, we cannot do everything. So that do, that's what I'm trying to say is just come and help us. There is not only strategies, it's not only content generation, it's, there is a lot of work that require help. We can make the connection with the technical teams, we can make the, uh, <coughs> we can do content, we can do the connections, we can do um, understanding the, the new needs of the new people. So if you have an idea, just come here and tell us and we can make uh, things work. And I'm going to do uh, an example. This was uh, the last video we published from Fedora Modularity. Uh, Adam come and say, hey, I have a video here that it can be useful for people. And they say, OK, send the video to me. And we are going to publish in the YouTube channel and make all the social network uh, uh, publishing. And it was published in, in Twitter. It was published in, in Google Plus. It was pu published in Facebook, and in the first week we reached uh, 2,000 views. It maybe sound that big for YouTube, but for us it was a win because it wasn't published anywhere. 
So 2,000 people is really nice. So that's what we are going to, we want to encourage people to make the content and reach us and we can figure out where the, this content fit and then travel it out of the world. So what I want to say is we are here to help, uh, to help you to make your content, uh, view it in the world. We are here to try to making the people know Fedora, but not only by by why the Linux distribution is, but targeting the r the right people for each content, classifying our content, identifying our audiences, it will be the the best thing we can do, and in doing that in the right way, will allow us to mm, make a real impact in the people, because if the audience is there for the specific content and you publish the right content to them, they are going to feel uh, connected with us. And that's the idea, we want to attract more people. Uh, any questions? So, I mean, I know that we, we, we have more users than we do customers, but do we have some sort of an outreach program that we're thinking about doing in terms of determining what users are doing effectively and then highlighting that? Well, actually, uh, no. But the answer is no because, uh, like I was saying, there we are only two guys working marketing, and there is too much job per release, and there is too much job about content. And the last, uh, I was going to say six months maybe, I was working with a podcast, so that consumed a lot of time because it required recording, editing, publishing. And it became a little hard in working with uh, with that kind of strategy to have this knowledge to what people is use doing with the uh, distribution, how many users we are having, but f they definitely we need to work in stuff like that. Any other question? So, um, do we kind of try to? Okay. Is there a specific reason for uh, marketing and uh, social network to be different teams, or is it possible to use the teams? I think it would make more sense, uh, and maybe you won't be that alone <laughs> in in the marketing. Actually, I don't know why. When I came into the marketing team, it was already split in in actually in three different teams. There is the social network team, there is the Fedora magazine team, and it's the marketing team that are three different teams. I was gonna say, I, I understand it's partially for those exact reasons that um, the social networking team is kind of a, the people who have access to the various social networks uh, accounts that we have, but they all show up with a different agenda. So they wanna make sure that either Comblog or magazine or whatever gets done. And then there's a few people who show up and go, I wanna, you know, I don't know, retweet cool things that I see around Fedora, but there's not consistency there in that sense. Um, it would be cool if, as part of our marketing strategy, we kind of defined what we wanted to do with each of those media channels and what they were designed to reach. I would want to make sure, at least this is my personal opinion, we don't want to explode the number of media channels. I think that would be very, very bad if we suddenly went, okay, we now have you know nine different Twitter accounts for each flavor of what we think people and humanity are. Um, but I think that that's the challenge there. And one of the things that I think we need to be cognizant of is that even if we say that you know we want to go after llama herders as our primary marketing target, that doesn't mean that Fedora Magazine is necessarily going to switch all of its content to you know discussions of of yak combing or whatever it is that llama herders do. I totally this drive a little, a little uh, an interesting discussion because. Mm, uh, we are we have official accounts almost in every social media in existence, and the the social network uh, team have 
access to those accounts, but they don't necessarily generate contact except for Instagram. There's uh, no point in having an Instagram account without media content generation because it's Instagram, you just take the picture and it's up there. But for example, for YouTube, I was uh, included in the list of people that have access like, uh, I don't know, maybe three to six months ago. And I only upload one video. And I was saying, oh God, this this channel only have talk vlogs recording. There is nothing there. And there is a lot of things that can be done in YouTube right now that people is, uh, is looking for that kind of content. Like I say, there is different t the, uh, different content that can be in, in YouTube, like uh, slideshows, like uh, screencasts, like interviews, like just people making a statement. We, ha we have a plan right now that it was uh, it's supposed to be driven by our current federal program manager. I think we are not going to do it with him anymore because he will be working in other stuff. But the plan was to make uh, short videos of Fedora contributors saying why they are use Fedora, why they love it. Just short videos, like one minute videos, and finishing with the with the phrase uh, "I love Fedora" or "I am Fedora." Like we are Fedora hashtag we are using or we will be using in the Fedora Appreciation Week uh, coming and the I don't remember what day this Fedora Appreciation Week. Okay, it will be in November. So we are trying to make this kind of strategies to reach people. That's these short videos. There are people that really consume that kind of videos and it makes sense for us to reach that kind of audiences. And um, do we try to, the numbers of, for example, on YouTube, do we try to track the numbers of view we have? Uh, because I know that in the magazine is something that we don't really look at, well, we kind of try to set ourselves objectives in the team. So uh, last year we wanted to do 3 million views, so we, we did say, oh, okay, let's try to do 4 million. I don't think we'll do 4 million, but at least we got some kind of objective. I, I think it's, it, helps driving the team and um, when there are weeks where we don't have too much content, say, oh, okay, we need to try to even uh, do, do a quick uh, quick article that is um, uh, doesn't require too much work, but at least we, it will generate some views. So, um, I think that's that was my m main thinking of trying to have the same team like between marketing and, those, um, and the social media account is to kind of being able to have um, to try to set some like goals or objectives to try to challenge the team and like get some motivation. Actually, yes, and it's not uh, because I'm a real a real uh, YouTube consumer. I use YouTube a lot, and not only for viewing, just researching. And I have a, a plan that I will be trying to to drive. I, if I need somebody to help me to make the content, but yes, we have a a, a, a target. For example, base it on the videos of other communities and making percentages uh, with how many follows we ha have the our uh, YouTube account. We are trying to make uh, some kind of challenge to reach, but f to do that we need the content. So uh, also. Uh, normal YouTube sh uh, channels that have several thousands of people follow following them, they adjust the strategy in ad in in the goal, not in advance. So if they uh, start publishing, for example, I don't know, we are we are start publishing a screencast, but the people is not looking at that. We can drop it and focusing other things, you know. So it's not like we are going to make a plan for one year for the, all the videos we are going to to have there, but at least uh, have several starter ex as making some experiment and then adjust the strategy in uh, looking at the numbers we are generating, mostly how we do it in the magazine right now. There is another question? <laughs> sure. Um, so I, I quite li like YouTube also, and I think we, we really need some more stuff on uh, on YouTube. And I was thinking that um, related to the new docs and the quick docs, I think that would be a great um, 
great content just someone who goes through like one one of the quick docs uh, how to set up uh, i don't know my apache web server and thing like, and just like do a screencast of that uh, and that could be because i think more and more there are people that actually enjoy reading docs and there are people that enjoy watching tutorials or um like on youtube and that would be um another way to um to offer the doc content um and I'm pretty sure also we so in the magazine we we from time to time we also have articles uh just um, for example when there is a conference or thing like that we just have like oh uh, five five videos on uh, i don't know fedora modularity or five videos on thing like that so we could also use the magazine to promote uh, the youtube channel and get some some more traction in there actually uh, we think it in, in bad words. We were thinking in use the magazine articles to make YouTube content. For example, uh, I don't know, there was uh, an article of how to use, uh, I was, mi, uh, mini, mini what? A uh, Kubernetes cont uh, uh, container. And they say, okay, the, there is a, the, what the commands are, how you do it, how you configure it, we can do a, a screencast about it. So, uh, the, there are some style things we need to, to make. For example, uh, we try to make the screencast in a clean installation, to mostly because we don't have, we don't want to have these uh, old customized things that people maybe is going to ask, where is this, this shell is not bash, or how do you color, uh, colorize the, your, your prompt, or what is the background, or what, how do you make your terminal transparent and drive the discussion away from the real content. You know, so use a, a clean installation, a fresh installation. And that kind of little details really make a difference. Because if you really want to make the people committed with your content, you need to make the people focus in the content and not distract them with anything else. And one thing I learned from the podcast, for example, I love I love to hear music all the time, even when people is talking to me or when I'm, even when I'm reading. I love to uh, I love to hear music, but other people don't. And the first uh, uh, episode of the podcast had a background track, and the very first ten comments I have was remove the track because it's too distracting. I say, what? I love the track. <laughs> also, it was an open source track made by a friend. Of, uh, by, by a friend. So, okay, that, that kind of thing uh, made me realize that people want to focus in the content. If you put some uh, things that uh, distract people, you cannot get the attention you want, and that, the, that will be uh, hard for, for your objective to attract more people. Because uh, one powerful thing in, in social network is the reshading. Call it uh, retweeting, reposting. Uh, I don't remember how it's called in Google Plus. It has another name. But that kind of things is that make the social network powerful. If, you can, if people can reshare your content, so they, uh, you are going to gain more, more and more uh, followers, or the name you, they use in, in each uh, social network. But that will be done if the people is really uh, glad with the content. If they're happy with the content, they really like the content, they're going to share. Also, the thing with the, <coughs> with the YouTube channel right now is not only about uh, doing quick docs. I was, uh, uh, some people was asking me for do the podcast interviews in YouTube, but that, that, that's awful because I do it remotely. But maybe some people talking videos. In terms not of uh, in terms not of uh, recording uh, a workshop or talks or or uh, or event, but people talking directly to the audience. You know, like normal YouTube channels now that are not uh, uh, 
comedy or music is people that is that uh, targeting the the audiences directly. There's like the the content is for those people that are in the other part of the screen. So not just uh, recording of interviews or anything, but people that is making the content by talking to the audience. I don't know if you have another idea for YouTube content that can be used maybe for Instagram content. I, I'm not going to mention Twitter and Facebook because it was uh, really good. Uh, it's working really good right now, so we don't want to risk them. But uh, what other media do you think we can? Uh, not necessarily social network, but I don't know, uh, news boards or blogs or where do you think people is coming to consume content? For me, is uh, YouTube and Instagram are the most biggest right now, but it's not the only places we can look for content. So, uh, what do you think about it? Okay, uh, so opinion is is that uh, I feel like we should ensure that we're publishing to our own content networks and then syndicating to to wherever else we need to go so definitely want to have a, a stronghold on the content and then uh, move that out into the other networks as, as we as we can sure uh, I agree with that to 100%. So they be more focused in the content, not in the in the network we want to reach. Pre uh, primarily have uh, what kind of content we want to to put out, and then syndicate to Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or whatever we want to use. That makes sense for me. So yeah, for sure. Also, if if you have any idea of of content or or anything, I really encourage you to go to our Pagure. Uh, for the Fedora marketing is pagur slash dot uh, io slash Fedora hyphen marketing and put your idea there. Even if you already have content, you can just say, hey, I have this content. You, say, you think it can fit anywhere? And we can have some feedback and then uh, get them published. I think it would be nice to have because uh, for example I, I'm really interested in doing like screencast or like maybe development focus or, or thing like that but I never I never really uh, started to do it because uh, I need to research which software I need to use um, you know I want to it takes quite some time to do I don't want to have to uh, to try to do it once uh, give you the content and say, oh yeah, this is not very good quality. Or so it would be nice to try to have a bit like getting started. How you can start to to create content for and uh, maybe the best practice and and thing like that because it's it's not something straightforward. And I think there are like few tips of yeah, a uh, few things that um, that should be useful. Um, and yeah, and it's what I was about to say. It would be a good like magazine article or even a, a YouTube video or um, something that um, because I think with video content is, for example, if um, if I want to write a magazine article, I I, I can make a draft, and then I get feedbacks, and you it's it's much easier to uh, work like multiple times on on text, uh, where video it's it would be it takes much more time to edit and and things like that so it's it would be good to give like the like a good starting point for people to to create the content and not spend like ten days <laughs> redoing things and again and again one of the th so in terms of of building content uh, it seems to me like we really need, do need to define very clearly what those channels are and what the target audience is for each one of those. And then uh, one of the other things I was thinking is that uh, b both Instagram and Flickr uh, seem to le to um, lend themselves to 
uh, sketch diagrams very easily and I think that one of the things that might be very helpful is sketch diagrams or visual visualized notes that are associated with uh, specific success story. Yeah. Adam. Um, so when I'm thinking about what to create for content, kind of hard to think about like create a useful video about Fedora, right? It's too big. But if we get some, I don't know, you have the talking point, but if we have like a goals we want to achieve with these videos, like make Fedora attractive for server admins and then it's maybe easier to like go towards that or I don't know, something for graphic designers or like having specific areas or goals you want to achieve with this with the content will make it much easier for thinking about create like what what content to create does that make sense yes. Yes. this is a somewhat of a non sequitur and I apologize um it just dawned on me because you were speaking uh, you've made a lot of content for modularity I don't know how much of it's actually made it to our YouTube channel and I'm wondering if part of what we as a team could start with, like I don't use either of those social networks, so I, I can't tell you what's going to work there. But I wonder if we as a team actually should start with, because we, we have limited people, going out and actually just getting the stuff we're already making and getting it to this place. Um, an example of that is that uh, the council does approximately once a month a video meeting. Right now those are not published to our YouTube channel. Um, most of them, not necessarily going to be great, you know, heavy hitting, you know, Hollywood dramas, but several of them have been extraordinarily good and uh, the council would definitely be open to trying to structure the meeting in such a way that there was a chunk of content in the middle that would be very repurposable so that like we ran a presentation without any interruptions or something so that you could have a here's what a red team is and why it's important to Fedora video come out of a council meeting. Kind of one thing that came to mind for me too with after Adam's comment was a lot of the labs extend themselves pretty easily for reaching out to a defined target audience. So that was always one thing I always had wanted to try to drive towards was I, when it comes to defining an audience, like the labs are, they already have a lot of custom content that appeal to a specific niche of the Fedora user base. So that was always something that I had wanted to try to, and then it also helps to promote the labs as well because I feel like those can kind of get buried and lost. And to me, they're more exciting because they're, as I understand, they're easier to maintain because it's more just of a collection of packages. And uh, it's, uh, I, I feel like there's a lot of value because there's like, those are like target audiences that have been identified with like a, a slightly customized pre-installation of packages of Fedora. So it was always one thing I just wanted to like mention that could be a good place to try to look at for instead of trying to think like what, are, what target audiences we want to reach out to. I feel like some of that work has been done and then also kind of I think building off of like with the existing content as well. like. That would also be a, a good area to focus on. Because I feel like the content is there. It's just trying to bring it in to the places that we're trying to promote it on like the platforms. Yeah, that, that actually makes a lot of sense. In, I was uh, talking a little bit before that I know there is content there, like, like Brian said, but it's hard for, for a few people to reach uh, all the teams and to send the whole all emails and see where everybody is, is is is, is I, I mean, it's not like I turn the light and make all, all people come to me, you know. But I, I, it's impossible for two, three people to go to everywhere as well.
just for the recording, and then I'm going to pass the microphone to you and then to Adam. Uh, the comment was that uh, instead of trying to do all the work, make communication channels with different teams and different objectives, and have an easy task list that newcomers can go and and start creating content or working with the team and not drive only their current member of the marketing team because it's a few people and then to um, try to figure out how to make things work between all teams and marketing team and that's one I'm trying to figure out a little bit with Mindshare so let's see how it works so clearly clearly this this topic is is in the air cuz I was feeling it too so but in my in, in in my understanding I would want my marketing group to focus the content and identify the key areas that we want to highlight and then tell people and then deliver the request for that specific content and then guide that to those channels so um, so I think I think the 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 serious task here is finding a way to narrow the content requirements and identify the ones that the key areas that we want to uh, guide people to do to make this content yeah also an idea that I I stole from a, a magazine uh, a request and because it's doing I think is by the open source dot com uh, community is that they try to drive the content uh, in, in a specific topic by month I, and it's not realistic for us to make it by month but for example this month we are going to talk about design like what that was Adam was uh, talking about this month we are going to talk about containers this month we are going to talk about uh, I don't know uh, a Python development, you know, so having these specific areas targeted in time frames that are realistic for us to 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 work on, maybe will be helpful for what are you talking about? Cam campaigns instead of sprints. Sorry. Campaigns instead of sprints. Yes. Yeah, so one of the things I like on like doing software and programming. For example, when I started, I don't know, in high school or in the university was, I had this big advantage. I could contribute to open source projects and get like experience for free and just make something nice. And also people I know, for example, from marketing or other areas didn't have these opportunities. Or it looked like they didn't have these opportunities, but it looks like they might have now so somehow, and I don't know how, but building an environment for them to build experience and just like practice and do something like as a volunteer might be a good idea. But yeah, we would need to figure out how to do that, how to message to the people. Also, uh, it, it will depend specifically of what you want to achieve or what kind of content you are going to, to deliver. But for example, I was uh, trying, I think it's called it Open Broadcast System or OBS, a stu Open Broadcast Studio. It's, a, it's free software, but it uses uh, license and codecs. But it's so easy to configure just to grab vi a video and record it. And you can put in a background track if you want put, to put some music, find uh, uh, open license uh, content in, uh, in terms of audio is not that hard and it's impressive how many people just trying I don't know maybe DJ things or uh, trying to promote their own music in, in SoundCloud or everywhere so it's not that hard to make content if you want to but you need to make to tell the people that how it uh, is there and how to use it and then is is you require like three clicks to record uh, screen cuts just let me Justin? So like kind of reflecting back on my experience from when I was trying to like drive the focus of where marketing was going, I, I really think David was like really hitting it on the head was that uh, like it's there's a lot of different ways you can 
you can go. And I think just being explicit and focusing on like a, a specific area is fine. Like for me, like I think like it would have. I think one of the hardest things was just trying to figure out like wow, like what do we want to focus on? What do we want to do? But I think like my like my advice would have been would have or, like, thing I wish I had just done before would have been just to be like okay, the next three months, this is it. You know, because I think. I think it's the marketing team that needs to be explicit and to be bold and to say like, this is what we're going to focus on. This is what we're going to do. And then try to work or with the other groups, with the other teams, and even the user communities. Like this is another one that I want, had wanted to do, but say like, uh, like with social media, trying to bring in user contributions, like say like, uh, you're focusing on containers for three months. So you're trying to generate like container content and we can retweet, reshare, people's content that they've already created say like you know on their own personal blog setting up a next cloud server in a kubernetes or in an open shift cluster in a docker container and you know it's not in the fedora magazine it's not in the community blog but it's floating out there on someone's personal blog they did on fedora 28 and if we're trying to focus on a specific area say like like i'm going on the container like three months we're, we're focusing on containers that's what our focus is for these next three months uh it becomes easier for you as the marketing team to do that outreach and to know who and what groups, what teams, what people to try to build a relationship with for that three month focus. And then like, I think the thing I'd always wanted to do was try to bring in that user generated content. Like you're in the Fedora Telegram group too. And like, that's where I see all this content all the time. Or people will share these tweets of people who have written these blog posts or written this content, generated this content already. So like, that, would, that was kind of my, my next step was like, get content from within the community, from the core contributor community. And once you kind of have that baseline, then you can also try to build a more interactive, a more engaging social media presence by trying to include user content on the official platforms and channels as well. But like, my, my, my big piece of advice was like, for me, like it was always really hard to just be bold and to be like, this is what we're going to do. And I think like, you and Alberto and the and the rest of the team need to say, this is what we're going to do, and just be just do it and be explicit. I don't think you have to try to, you know, go around the you know the community or grow around the Fedora Council to figure out what that is. I think it's the core group of marketing contributors that needs to just be bold and and make that decision. Yeah, well, that was uh, also one of my first slides was uh, we as a marketing team we need to identify the audience we want to reach and I think in, in I want to talk about personal experience that I had with the podcast because it's, it's one of the biggest thing I'm doing with marketing right now and it makes a lot of sense what you're talking to because for the podcast I you say I want to say I want to do podcast that is just it's already an uh, now audience and in the podcast I want to do interviews with uh, members of each of different teams to let people know what teams are and what they are doing. So narrow the the work more, you know. So when we hit that specific thing, we we we, we get really good results. So what we are talking to makes sense because it's doing the same but for different uh, medias. Doing like, uh, for example for videos, we're going to make a, a video for container. You're narrowing to a specific thing and people can contribute because it's easier because you already have a, a, a key point or a point to talk about. So yes, actually that's a great idea. I think we need to be careful not to um, narrow too much. Uh, pretty much in the situation we have, we are now, the, we don't have much content. So if I was I wanted to contribute and I was told, oh no, for the next three months we do only con container, but I wanted uh, to do a video about the new to-do application in in, uh, in Fedora or like, I don't think we're really in a position to actually have like very specific goal and we should be like uh, trying to make it easier for people to give their content and try to publish. For example, if you search in YouTube uh, Fedora, the first few videos that are coming is like, Five reasons why I prefer the Fedora distro. I think this is, this should be like really con easy content to do. Like five reasons why you should use Fedora. Uh, uh, Fedora 28 workstation install and review. 
this is some stuff we we could do also i think and like very generic very easy like uh, like um not too specific on um i i don't know i think we should try to maybe get more um, new people in the community and not try to focus on stuff we are already doing but like more like oh why you should use fedora why uh, why does it make sense if you're doing Python to uh, install Fedora and, and do your Python development in Fedora? Like easy, easy, large audience topic. I'm going to push back slightly on that. And the only pushback I'm going to give you is, one, I think that's a perfectly valid target for the first in months. Let's use three because that's what Justin said. But I think that, the, that we should treat this kind of like the way we would treat, say, an open source code project in the sense that we have a set of things that we'd like to see accomplished and we wrote our easy fix task list, you know, bug suggestion list for starting people around the, the areas of feature set we want to develop. So if, if we say it's new user onboarding or containers, all of the suggested pitches for content are around that. But if you show up with something amazing on a web server, take it. You know, like if somebody shows up with a feature you didn't plan to ship in the first three months, but it's feature ready, accept that patch. Um, and I think that that may lead to occasionally where you're, you're looking and you're like, on message, on message, on message, whoa, what is this? But especially with the nature of things like YouTube, where I suspect, again, not a user, but I suspect people very rarely sit down and watch a channel in chronological order when it's a channel like this one. I don't think that content's going to either get lost or look weird. Uh, actually, no. Okay. I'm not like I say. I'm a really heavy YouTube uh, consumer, uh, content consumer, and I think we can. Actually, I'm focusing a little in uh, a much uh, too much in YouTube because we are talking about uh, uh, videos, but. Uh, yes, people look for in channel for chronological order videos. If the YouTube channel have a, um, a pace of publication or um, a consistent schedule, for example, like we try to do with a magazine, we have uh, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday publications every week. So we can say on Mondays we are going to make live videos, like reviews, like installs of five reasons. On Friday, in, on Wednesday we are going to uh, short videos about people in the community saying why they use Fedora, how they st start in the community, like the we are Fedora videos. On Fridays we are going to focus three months on Friday videos about containers. So I think if we have enough content and we can set uh, for YouTube specifically, one day of the week to uh, reach the three different uh, uh, approaches we are talking to, and it makes sense. And the people is, uh, look YouTube like it was a television. It was a television. You know, uh, this program, uh, this series, publicate uh, publish an episode every Friday, like old-fashioned television. And people is watching YouTube that way right now because I, I'm doing it actually, and I know the people do, and, and it makes sense to to generate content in that way because it's happening now. We are not uh, reinventing the wheel. It's happening in that way, and we can just follow the the way that way. Yeah. So I think that having these more specific topics might help not just like to consume the content but also to create it and if I think about I don't know crazy example right like I just say tell you tell me a good story and you would be like what about what and you'll be thinking about what but if I tell you tell me a story about being elephant and eating ice cream it will be much easier for you to come up with like many funny scenarios right and I think we are open source community right we are not like professional production company with paid team of people that can do anything so I think we need to target both the audience to make it make the strategy work for the consumers, but also for the people who will be creating the content. So it's easier for them to come up with a topic, and that's what I like the more narrow areas. And yeah, basically, that's my the mic yeah. to Justin. I mean, that actually was more or less what I was going to say too, but I was just going to kind of give a reaffirmation for that approach too. Like just like how in the magazine, there's a series of starter pitches that are suggested articles to begin writing. 
and we've tried to focus those around certain areas of content. I think that until we start getting a regular flow of content, like, like for me, like my experience was like I was trying to come up with these, like trying to build like a pipeline for receiving and working with content, but the problem was that uh, we've kind of built this pipeline without having any like no input, no output. So for me, I, I really feel like for the size of where this team is right now and where in the shortest amount of time this team could start to try to produce meaningful content and well not not produce but also it's like accumulate and gather this content because I, I do think it's there it's just crafting it for the right audience like taking what's already there and just modifying it modifying the uh, the message just a little bit for your audience I think by focusing in on a specific group by a specific content or type of content that will really be the most helpful for this group of people to accomplish the goals you're trying to set out to do for the next few months so uh, yeah uh, uh, we can both uh, we can do both things or continue or coffee break but I think yeah. we the discussion is good right now I don't want to to split yeah. it so let's continue and take the coffee break a little bit uh, later sorry yeah. No problem. Yeah. So that that was all I was gonna add. I just think that like for this team, like that is a very like that's the thing that I think I wish I had I wish I had done two years back. Like I wish I would have just said, you know, we're gonna focus on we're going to focus on modularity content for this next three months because that would have made my my efforts of trying to find this content and accumulate this content uh, it would have made it less of like a a Wild West rodeo show of just like throwing things out to mailing lists and different holes and just hoping you get something back. So like, I don't know, like that was really like, I think like from my experience doing this, that's like the thing I wish I had done. Like I wish I had just been explicit and said, this is what we're going to do for the next three months. And just like, you know, if you, just like Brian said, like if good content comes in, then you can take it too. Just like an open source project. So, um, so again, if I take the example of the magazine, for example, every release we have a set of um, articles that are very popular, um, like what's new in uh, Fedora now 29, and that's always every 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 year it's the most popular articles. And I think that's something maybe we we need to have also like um, it's those are easy content and like it should be easy to say oh every release we want a YouTube video to, uh, showing like the new things in, in GNOME or the new things in uh, in modularity or things like that like, try to those should be like kind of deadline and um, and tag, um, things that we should we should target to have at least every release um, that might be like a good thing to uh, as an objective for the team to say, oh yeah, we have a new release, we, we want a video on the... And I think we can have the advantage of of um, of being close from the project, so we could actually even release this video before other people start to do review and things like that, kind of a preview of the next Fedora release and, and things like that. Yeah. Mm. I mean, uh, actually, uh, that makes sense because, uh, for example, one of the things we were doing with the with the release screenshots was trying not to to let other media uh, consumers, uh, other media publications uh, outside the magazine, outside the, the our original source, take their own screenshots because we want to people focus on uh, or the thing we want to highlight. And makes sense to, for example, make create a. Uh, this uh, release review before the, this, the the or at the date the review the the new release is uh, published, you know, because we want the, the consumers to focus in what we want them to focus, not let's explore everything and maybe focuses or find something that we don't that is not the best thing of the of the new release. So yes, that makes a lot of sense. So, um, 
let's do the coffee break and then we can go back. Thanks a lot for, for the first part of the session. Thank you.